Given the roots of the equation, x squared minus x plus 2 equals 0 are alpha and beta. Find the quadratic equation whose roots are 1 on 1 plus alpha squared and 1 plus beta squared. The general form of a quadratic is given by x squared minus sum of roots plus products. If we make this expression identical to this general form, you will obtain x squared minus x plus 2 to be identical to x squared minus the sum of roots plus products and the roots given here are alpha and beta. From this identity, we obtain the sum of roots to be equal to 1 and the product of roots to be equal to 2. We can therefore move on to obtain a new sum and the new sum is given by 1 on 1 plus alpha squared plus 1 on 1 plus beta squared. Looking for the LCM, we obtain 1 plus alpha squared into 1 plus beta squared and when we divide, we obtain the following 1 plus beta squared plus 1 plus alpha squared. We can further simplify this, the numerator as well as the denominator and we we'll obtain 2 plus alpha squared plus beta squared all on 1 plus alpha squared plus beta squared plus alpha beta all squared. You must take note with the alpha beta all squared. It is not alpha beta to the power 4, it is alpha beta all squared. Most students make a mistake at that particular part. Alright, further simplifying we obtain we know that alpha plus beta squared can be further simplified as alpha plus beta all squared minus 2 alpha beta. And we find the same expression in the denominator. So we replace it by the same quantity. We can now put in the values to obtain a new sum as a half. Then we can move on to look for the new product which is given by 1 on alpha squared plus 1 times 1 on 1 plus beta squared and we find out that we have this same expression in the previous part of the new sum so we just put in the values and simplify and we obtain a new product to be equal to a half therefore a new equation will be given by x squared minus sum of roots that is the new sum plus the new product equals 0 and multiplying all through by 2 we obtain 2x squared plus x plus 1 equals zero please guys don't forget to subscribe and click on the notifications button so that whenever any new video comes in you will not be missing subscribe and click on the notifications button and please if you find out that anyone is using our content don't forget to send us an email at gcematpanel at gmail.com and if you are in need of any past question for any subject don't forget to visit our blog www.gcematpanel.blogspot.com The B part of the equation reads Given that the polynomial P of X equals that and has degree of 3 and it is exactly divisible by X minus 1 and P of 0 equals 10, find Q of X. According to this question, we are being told that the polynomial has degree 3 therefore q of x must have the form ax plus b because 2x minus 1 times x minus 3 has degree 2 so we are left with a degree of 1 to complete that degree to be 3 therefore a q of x must have this form ax plus b and we are equally being told that x minus 1 is a factor which therefore means if we substitute x equals 1 into this polynomial the result will be 0 so let's do the substitution so from that substitution, we obtain a plus b equals 2, giving us equation 1. Equally, we are being told that p of 0 equals 10. So if we substitute 0 into this polynomial, we obtain 10. Therefore, our equation 2 becomes b equals 6. Now that we already have the value of b to be equal to 6, we can substitute this value in equation 1 to obtain the value of a. And that gives us minus 4 and conclusively our q of x equals minus 4x plus 6. Thank you guys so much. It was nice watching. We are moving on to the next question which is question 2. Please do not forget to subscribe for if you don't subscribe and click on the notifications button you might miss out on our new videos which are being uploaded every day. Don't forget to send us a mail in case of any query and
Tetsu. Given the matrices M equals that and N equals that, find the matrix product MN and NM. So the matrix product MN is given by matrix M times matrix N. And when we do this operation, we will obtain a matrix of order 3 by 3, which is given by 300. Zero zero 030003 and this matrix is equal to 3 times the identity matrix similarly nm will be equal to matrix n times matrix m and this product will equally give us a 3 by 3 matrix which is given by 3000030003 and this is called three times the identity matrix. From here, we can conclude that MN is equal to NM. Do not make the mistake to say that matrix M and N are inverses. That is not correct because MN is equal to three times I. Similarly, NM is three I's. The question continues as follows. Hence, find M inverse. The word hence here has been used, which means we must continue with the previous solution that we have to work in this particular part. So we have been asked to look for M inverse. So I'm going to use the identity MN equals three I's. And M times one over three N should be equal to I. From here, the product of two matrices giving us the identity in matrix implies one of them is the inverse of the other. So M times 1 over 3N giving me the identity matrix means the inverse of matrix M is 1 third of matrix N. And we can simplify to have 1 over 3 times all the entries in matrix N. And this is what it results in. We have minus 1 third, 0, 1 third, 5 on 3, 0, minus 2 on 3, 2, 1, minus one don't forget guys to click on the subscribe button so that in case you upload any video you will not be left out and equally click on the notifications button so that whenever any video is uploaded you'll be one of the first to be notified you will not be left out in anything and if you find out that anyone is using our content content don't forget to get to us on gce math panel at gmail.com in need of past questions for any subject you can visit our site gce matpanel.blogspot.com www.gcematpanel.blogspot.com The B part of the equation reads The transformation represented by the matrix M maps the points A, B and C to the points 306, 053, 101 respectively. Find the coordinate of A, B and C. According to this transformation, the points 306, 053, and 101 are respectively the images of the points A, B, and C. So what we have been given here are the images. And the transformation MP maps the points P to P prime. This implies solving for P will give us M inverse times P prime. That is, we multiply both sides. That is pre-multiplication of both sides by the inverse of matrix M. And that will give us... P, which we are looking for to be equal to M inverse times P prime. Note that the point P or the matrix P consists of the points A, B, and C. So putting this or simplifying will give us one third, that is M inverse times N, which we had before. Now times the matrix P prime, that is the matrix of all the images of A, B, and C. And that gives us 3, 0, 1, 0, 5, 3, 6, 3, 1. Where 306 is A prime, 0, 5, 3 is B prime, and 1, 0, 1 is C prime. When we do this multiplication, simplify, we obtain 1, 1, 0, 
1 minus 2, 2, 0, 1, 1, which are the points A, B, and C respectively. Therefore, our A is 1, 1, 0, B is 1 minus 2, 1, and C is 0, 2, 1. The next question will be question 3. And please don't forget to subscribe and click on the notifications button so that for any new video that comes in, you will have a copy. Thank you so much and stay tuned. Hello guys and welcome to June 2016, question 3. Given that the function f of x equals x to the power 3 is differentiable in the interval minus 2 to 2, use the mean value theorem to find the value of x for which the tangent to the curve is parallel to the chord through the points minus 2, 8 and 2, 8. The mean value theorem states, for a continuous and differentiable function in the interval a, b, there exists a number c such that f prime of c equals f of b minus f of a, all that on b minus a. This is the mean value theorem. Let us apply it in this question f prime of x will be equal to 3x squared and f of b minus f of a on b minus a would be equal to f of 2 minus f of minus 2 all on 2 minus minus 2 giving us a value of 4 therefore 3x squared is equal to 4 and x will be equal to positive negative 2 on root 3 The B part of the equation reads, express in the form y equals f of x, the general solution of the differential equation y dy dx equals x into 1 plus y squared. The first thing we have to do here is to separate the variables and y dy is equal to x into 1 plus x squared dx. We now bring everything on one side, we have y on 1 plus y squared dy is equal to x dx. We now introduce the integral sign on both sides and we look at the left hand side and we find out that when you dif differentiate the denominator you will have twice the numerator so we insert it through there. But to make some sort of a balance we have to multiply that left hand side by a half such that a half times 2 cancels out. There is some sort of a balance. We can now integrate both sides simply. On the left hand side we have a half lean 1 plus y squared to be equal to on the right hand side a half x squared plus a constant k. Multiply all through by a half we have lean 1 plus y squared to be equal to x squared plus 2k and raising both sides using the exponential value of e we will have 1 plus y squared to be equal to e to the power x squared plus 2k and simplifying using the laws of indices you have e to the x squared times e to the 2k e to the 2k is actually another constant which you can replace by lambda that will give us lambda e to the power x squared and our y will be equal to the square root of that value minus 1 where lambda is an element of the set of real numbers Hello and welcome to June 2016, paper 2, question 4. Do not forget to subscribe and click on the notifications button. You can equally visit our site on gcematpanel.blogspot.com. Please subscribe. Question 4. Use the Moivre's theorem to express cos 4 theta in terms of cos theta. This question requires us to, to re represent multiple angles in terms of single angle. So we are going to use the Moivre's theorem of cos n theta plus i sine n theta equals cos plus i sine theta all of that to the power n. We expand the right hand side, we compare the real and imaginary parts and obtain the identity. Using this identity, 
Because 4 theta plus i sine 4 theta equals 6, 4 theta. And it's expressed like that. We can use binomial expansion or the Pascal's triangle. Using the Pascal's triangle, we have to the power 4. So we use the bottom. And this gives us cos to the power 4 plus 4 cos cubed i sine theta plus 6 cos squared plus i sine theta squared plus 4 cos i sine theta cubed plus i sine theta to the power 4. When we expand, we have cos to the power 4 plus i 4 cos cubed sine minus 6 cos squared sine squared minus i 4 cos sine cubed plus sine to the power 4. Bringing the real parts together, we have that, and the imaginary parts together, we have that. Now, using the identity, cos 4 theta is actually a real number. So this will give us the real part, because 4 theta is equal to re part of 6, 4 theta. And this will be equal to cos to the power 4 minus 6 cos squared sine squared plus sine to the power 4. But the equation requires us to give a final answer in terms of cos theta only. So we further use other identities to simplify this, knowing that sine squared theta equals 1 minus cos squared theta. And when we simplify our final answer will be 8 cos to the power 4 minus 6 cos squared plus 1. We now move to the next part of the equation which requires us to look for z in that expression given. So when we look for the LCM, we have 1 on z cubed to be equal to z2 plus z1, all that on z1 times z2 and solving for z from here we have z cubed z uh, z3 to be called z2 times z1 all that on z1 plus z2 we now put in the values and simplify and a simplification after that is done will give us a value of minus 8 plus 6i on that all that on 5i's so we either multiply numerator and denominator by minus i or by i such that the i is no more in the denominator and in this case we obtain minus 8 i's minus 6 all that on 5. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for question 5 that will be coming and many other videos. Don't forget to subscribe and share. Bye-bye. Hello and welcome to the GCE Math panel. This question concerns June 2016, Paper 2, Question 5. Please don't forget to subscribe and click on the notifications. The position vectors of three points, A, B, and C, are A, B, and C respectively, where A equals that, B equals, and C equals that. Find the vector product AC cross AB. Here, the first thing we have to do is to look for AC, and we know that AC is given by head minus tail, so we have C minus A, and AB is B minus A. So when we look for these uh, vectors AC and uh, AB, we have the following results. For AC, we have minus 2, 0, minus 5, and for AB, we have minus 3, 5, minus 3. We can now look for the cross product AB cross AC and this is given by since AC is mentioned first we first put AC followed by AB and the cross product gives us 25 i's plus 9 j's minus 10 k's the next part of the equation requires us to look for the vector equation of the plane and we know that the vector equation of a plane is given by r dot n equals oa dot n in this particular case, I would like to emphasize that n here is the normal vector, which is normal to the vectors AB and AC. It is perpendicular to these two vectors. And since we have used the point A to look for AB and AC, that is why on the right hand side we are using OA dot n. If we use the point B, we would have used OB dot n. Please take this into consideration when you have questions that concern such. So in this case, we will just take the dots on both sides and this is what we obtain. So the vector dot 25 i's plus 9 j's minus 10 k's equals 
15. That is the vector equation of the plane ABC. Thank you so much and don't forget to subscribe. I am Louisa here on the Math Panel presenting this particular script and we have a lot of things coming on our way. Watch out question 6. Bye bye. Hello and welcome to June 2016 question 2, 6, paper 2. Don't forget to subscribe and click on the notifications and you can visit us using our blog jcmathpanel.blogspot.com. You're welcome. Express f of theta equals 8 cos theta minus 15 sine theta in the form L cos theta plus alpha where L is a positive constant and alpha is an acute angle. Hence, find the general solution of the equation 80 cos theta minus 15 sine theta equals 13 and find the maximum and minimum value of 5 on f of theta plus 3. The first thing we have to do to answer this question is to expand and equate the coefficients that we have here. So we have S cos theta minus 15 sine theta to be equal to R cos theta cos alpha minus R sine theta sine alpha. Here, when you look at the identities, we have R cos alpha to be 8 and R sine alpha to be 15. This gives us 10 alpha to be equal to 15 on 8, and the angle alpha is at 10, 15 on 8, giving us 61.93 degrees. L will be equal to 8 squared plus 15 squared, the square root of all of that giving us 17. We can then express our f of theta as 17 cos theta plus 61.93 degrees, which is acute angle. Hence, means we should use this answer to answer the remaining part of the equation that is sub 2. Find the general solution of the equation 80 cos theta minus 150 sine theta to be equal to 13. Here we observe that they have multiplied this function by 10 and the word hence has been used as I just mentioned. So this is going to be equal to 10 into 8 cos theta minus 15 sine theta. But we have 8 cos theta minus 15 sine theta to be 17 cos theta plus 61.93 degrees. So replace it by this and we have 170 cos theta plus 61.93 degrees equals 13. Here we take the cos inverse of both sides after dividing by 170 and we will have theta plus 61.93 degrees to be equal to arc and 13 on 170 plus or minus 360 degrees and where n is a natural number, and our theta will be equal to this value. The next part of the equation requires us to look for the maximum and minimum values of 5 on f of theta plus 3. Here we already have the value of f of theta to be 17 cos theta plus 61.93 degrees. The first thing you have to understand here is the cosine is lying in the interval from minus 1 to 1. So, minus 1 is less than or equal to cos theta plus 61.93 degrees, less than or equal to 1. Therefore, if you multiply this by 17, you will have minus 17 less than or equal to 17 cos theta plus 61.93 degrees, less than or equal to 17. And if you add 3 to all through, you have 17 to be 17 minus 17 plus 3 giving us minus 14 less than or equal to f of theta plus 3 less than or equal to 13 to 20. Therefore, we have the denominator here. What we have to do now is just take the numerator and divide by the extremes to see which one gives us the mean and the max. Since the left hand side is negative, we are going to have 5 on minus 14 to be the minimum value and the maximum value will be 25 divided by 20 giving us 1 over 4. These are the maximum and minimum values that we have asked us for. Thank you so much and stay tuned for question 7. That will be coming in. Thank you so much and don't forget to subscribe. Bye bye. We now continue with uh, question 7, which reads express in partial fractions hence evaluate the integral shown to express this in terms of partial fractions 
the denominator is a quadratic that has been factorized and has linear factors so this will be identical to a over x plus 1 plus b over x plus 3 multiplying both sides by the denominator of the left hand side we have 5x minus 3 to be equal to a into x plus 3 plus b into x plus 1 now when x is equal to minus 3 we have b to be equal to 9 and when x is equal to minus 1 a will be equal to minus 4 therefore f of x becomes minus 4 on x plus 1 plus 9 on x plus 3 in partial fractions evaluating that integral since it's already in partial fractions and the word hence has been used so we continue with this answer that we have in the previous part and when we integrate this we have the integral minus 4 in x plus 1 plus 9 in x plus 3 note you have to use the absolute value signs because this integral will be undefined if it takes a value of 0 if the lean function inside occupies or takes a value of 0 it will be undefined so you have to use the absolute value signs and this integral gives us 0 0.9673 decimal places don't forget to click on the subscription button and you can visit our site on gcematpanel.com and stay tuned for other papers that will be coming in the next part of the question reads given f of x equals that and taking 1.5 as the first approximation to that equation Use the newton raphson procedure to obtain to three decimal places a second approximation to the equation. Here, the first root is denoted x0, where x0 is 1.5, and this is the first root or the first approximation. We now have to look for f of 1 using the equation that has been given, and we have approximately 0 0.351. Then we look for the integral, the derivative of f of x. We look for the derivative, and this derivative gives us 10x, minus 2 on root x f prime of 0 using this derivative gives us 13.367 and to use the newton raphson procedure to obtain the second root this note the second root here is denoted x1 the second root will be given by the equation x1 equals x0 minus f of x0 on f prime of x0 we put in these values you have already obtained above and simplify and this gives us a value of 1.473 and as equation stipulates to three decimal places thank you so much and stay tuned as we proceed to question a thank you so much i have been Novena presenting at the gcd math panel bye bye we now move on to the next question, June 2016, paper 2, question 8. Find the set of values for of x for which x plus 2 on x minus 1 is strictly less than 3. Many students will make a lot of mistakes with questions like this. For you to solve this inequality, you have to bring everything to the left-hand side and simplify. Therefore, you have x plus 2 on x minus 1 less than 3 to become x plus 2 on x minus 1 minus 3 to be less than 0. We look for the LCM and we simplify and we have obtained the results minus 2x plus 5 all on x minus 1 to be strictly less than 0. On the number line, you can do the testing or you can make a table. And with this table, the only region that satisfies are the regions above 5 on 2 and the region below 1. So in the form of intervals, you can write the interval as follows. From minus infinity to 1 from below and from 5 on 2 above to positive infinity. Or you can use the normal notation, x is strictly less than 1, union x is strictly greater than 5 on 2. Now we are given this function and we are being asked to look for the range of the function. Note, 
the range of a function is the domain of its inverse. So we just have to look for the inverse function and obtain the domain. Or we make x the subject of the formula and solve for the domain using y. So in this case, you have 3x minus 4 to be equal to x plus 2 times y. Making x the subject of the formula, we will obtain x to be equal to 2y plus 4, all that on 3 minus y. And this function, this function which is in terms of x now, is the inverse function is defined when y is not equal to 3. And the range of the function is a set of all real numbers excluding the value 3. That is the domain of this function. Don't forget to click on the subscription button and don't forget to share our videos for many will be coming after this one, question 9 and others. We now move to the B part of the equation which states x. Now to sketch this graph, we first start by looking at the domain of definition. Equating the, on equating the denominator to zero, the domain is already there actually, the domain is a set of all real numbers excluding minus 2. So when you look at the domain in the form of intervals, we have four bounds. We have to look for limits at each of these boundaries of the domain of the definition. But it is easy for us to combine negative infinity and positive infinity with this particular function since we know that they all, we will obtain the same value. The limit as n tends to negative 2 from below is positive infinity and as x tends to negative 2 from above is negative infinity. This therefore tells us that the value x equals 2 is an asymptotic line and in this case a vertical asymptote. You can see this from the domain of definition. Minus 2 is excluded from below and from above. The next thing is to state the asymptote and here we have the vertical asymptote from the domain of definition to be x equals 2 and the horizontal asymptote from the limits as x tends to positive or negative infinity to be equal to 3. Therefore, the center of symmetry, though it has not been asked, can be given by the vertical asymptote, comma, the horizontal asymptote. And in this case, minus 2, 3 is the point of symmetry. The next thing is the intercept, where the curve cuts the coordinate axis. When x equals 0 in the equation, y is minus 2. So we have an intercept at a, then when y is equal to 0, x equals 4 on 3. We have another intercept at 4 on 3, 0. The next thing, we look for the derivative function. And looking at this derivative and simplifying using um, a bot uh, bottom the top minus top the bottom all on bottom squared, as some students you say, bottom the top minus top the bottom and so on. I don't know, it's a mnemonic, I'm just using it. It's crazy, but it's funny when I'm teaching in class and they use it. So when we simplify, we have y prime to be equal to 10 all on x plus 2 squared. Looking at the numerator of the derivative, there is no variable in it. This tells us that there is no turning point. And since the numerator is positive and the denominator is positive, it means the derivative of the function is strictly greater than 0. Therefore, the function is strictly increasing. We can now move on to our curve. Those are the coordinate axis. We put a horizontal asymptote x, y equals 3, and a vertical asymptote x equals minus 2. Then we sketch the curve passing through the intercept which we mentioned above. And since the curve is symmetrical above about the point minus 2, 3, it therefore means it equally exists on the other side of the curve. And this is how the curve is to be sketched. Thank you so much for your kind attention and we hope that this will help you to have better grades in your studies and actually find a positivism in your charism which you pursue in life. Thank you so much. Bye. Don't forget to subscribe and share our videos. GCE Maths Panel June 2016 Paper 2, question 9. In this question, we have to work with two decimal places. 
And the table below shows the values of X and Y obtained in a certain lab work. The variables being connected by the equation shown by drawing a suitable graph of log Y minus 2 against log X minus 1 estimates the values of the constants A and B. The first thing we have to do here is to use what has been given. Y minus 2 equals B into X minus 1 to the power A. Taking log of both sides, we have log y minus 2 to be equal to log b into x minus 1 to the power a and simplifying the right hand side gives us log b plus a log x minus 1 and this equation is now in the form y equals c plus mx where c is the y intercept and m is the gradient which corresponds to a we now make a table of values. We take each x value, we subtract 1 from it, and we take the log of that. So the first one, we have 2.659 minus 1, which is 1.659, and the log of that is 0 0.22. We take equally 4.801 minus 1, which is 3.801. The log of that is 0 0.58, and we do the same for all the other x values. We now do the same for the y that has been given for log y minus 2. Each y value, we subtract 2 and take the log. And we obtain these values as you can see on your screen after we have completed this stage we have to now move to a graph and use a suitable scale that will give us a very good value or accurate values and in this case we look at the y the it ranges from 0 0.14 to 0 0.92 so we can start from 0 and end around 1 the same with the x-axis which runs from 0.22 to 1.3 we can start from 0.2 to 1.4 this is a good scale and we now plot the points we have 0 0.22 and 0 0.92 the next point is 0 0.58 and 0.66 and we do the same for all the other points after plotting all these points we draw a suitable straight line that touches all these points from this straight line we have to make a triangle as large as possible that we can use it to obtain the gradient of this line note that this line has a negative gradient and at the point a we have 0 0.3.8.6 and at b we have 1.28 1.6 as coordinates now the change in y is 8.6 minus 1.6 which is 7.0 and the change in x is 0 0.3 minus 1.28 which gives us minus 0 0.98 from here our change in y on change in x equals 0 7.00 divided by 0 0.98 which is equal to 7.14 two decimal places equally our y intercept here is the point 9.4 from the graph it is the point 0 0.94 and this corresponds to log b base 10 which is equal to 0 0.94 and solving for b gives us 10 to the power 0 0.94 which is 8.71 these are the values of the constant a and B. Thank you and stay tuned for question 10. Let us now look at question 10. Find the term independent of x in the expansion shown. Here the nth term in n expansion is given by n combination r a to the power n minus r b to the power r and this particular case our a is x squared and our b is 1 on 2 to the power x now when we simplify these uh, values we have 6 combination r x to the power 2 into 6 minus r times 2x to the power minus r and bringing the terms to further simplification, we have 6 combination r times 2 to the power minus r times x to the power 12 minus 2r minus r. Now the term independent of x will be given by this x value being equated to x to the power 0. And from here we can equate the powers and solve for x. That will give us a value of r to be equal to 4. Therefore our term independent of x when we put into the, what we have in the first step here will be actually the fifth term that is the r plus one term which is the fifth term and this term independent of x will have a value of six combination four times two to the power minus four giving us a value of five on four that is the term independent of x 
The second part of the equation requires us to actually solve for the first term and the common ratio in the progression that has been given. And we can formulate two equations as follows. The sum of the first two terms is a plus a r, which is equal to 20 on 3, which you can factorize to have a into 1 plus r equals 20 on 3. And the sum to infinity here has been given as 12, which is a on 1 minus r equals 12. And a will be equal to 12 into 1 minus r. The, equa the equation equally tells us that the terms in this series are positive, so we are going to work with that information. Now, substituting equation 2 into equation 1, we obtain 12 into 1 minus r times 1 plus r equals 20 on 3. And when we further simplify, we will have a value of r to be equal to 2 on 3. We take the positive value because the equation says that the series is actually having positive terms. And when we substitute, we have a value of a to be equal to 4. Therefore, the sum of the first three terms will be equal to a into 1 plus r plus r squared, which equals 38 on 9. We can equally use the formula. Thank you guys so much and stay tuned as we're having a lot of nice packages which we unfold in this GCE math panel for you to prepare very well for this exam which is approaching. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe and share our videos so as to help many other students. Bye bye. Bye bye. Don't forget to subscribe and share our videos.